It's Thursday, September the 2nd, King of the Mountain State Show. I'm Chase Hill. I'm here with the Atom Bomb, Adam Collins. Uh, he sat ringside with me and watched the fights just uh, this past weekend in Huntington. I'm going to get his perspective of some of the highlights and what he took out of the event. Adam, thanks for being with me today. Yes, sir. Glad to be here. All right, man. I know you had a good seat at the venue. You're sitting right beside of me. Uh, we had the same angle on most of this stuff, same opinion on a lot of it, but just right off the bat, like not an individual fight or anything, but I'm not going to make you break down everything, but what stood out to you, some highlights of the event? I, I've never been a part of a show that had just had 10 amateur fights, no pros involved or anything, but it was that exciting. Every, every fight was good. And it was you know, a lot of heavyweights were pretty evenly matched, but then even the heavyweights come out, there was going to be some knockouts come out. It was a great show. I enjoyed it. You know, that's the first time I'd ever been in that venue, and that was um... – I was really impressed with it, the way that the staff and everything worked. They really did good for us. I like the way it's set up, the dressing rooms, the ticket, the metal, just the whole thing I thought was set up really good. That's a venue that we're definitely going to be using in the future. We should be back there December 11th for the championship of the King of the Mountain State. So, and like you said, no pros on it, all amateurs, but without headgear and the way these guys showed up, made weight, fault, and all that kind of stuff, you – if we, this was five, six years ago, you'd have thought these guys this that this was an all pro show. Oh yeah, it was oh, it was great. Yeah, the fights were phenomenal. Just absolutely phenomenal. And like I said, the venue was great. And I've never these are the venues are hard to get pretty warm with all the people in it. And it, it was great. So if we go through a little bit of the fights, um I you know, we'll start kind of at the end, work our way back. I thought it was maybe fight of the night, it was a pretty exciting fight. Uh a uh, close friend there, a guy of yours, uh, Gary Rowland, he had Luke Grizzle. I think you may have been the one to call it that said, look, look for Luke Grizzle to show up and fight, and he did. I mean, it was an awesome fight. Gary took control of him, learned some things uh, that I'm sure he's going to work on, but he was dominant at times, big knockouts, that kind of stuff. So what did you see in that fight out of Gary and out of Luke? I, I, you know, just like I, like I told you in the previous interview, I thought Luke was a good boxer. And he stopped Paul, so it made it twice as awkward because you know, Gary's, Gary's learning the boxing game, but he's still still kind of a slugger. And uh, it, it went exactly the way I thought it would. Uh, Gary's conditioning was tested a little bit. I don't think he was quite expecting to go as hard as he did, but Luke kept pressing. I mean, Luke went down what, two or three times and, and just kept coming back for more. It, it was an absolutely phenomenal fight. Well, and I thought Gary maybe saw an opportunity early on and went to jump on him and thought he was going to finish him, got his emotions going. And whenever something like that happens and you don't end up finishing him, there's a little bit of a dump on the energy there. I'm sure you've been through that yourself. And and I'm sure that factored into Gary, you know, the rest of the fight. Right. Yeah, there, there was a couple of times earlier where, where Luke looked like he was out on his feet. But, man, his credit, man, he's, he's tough as nails. Well, and the longer the fight went on, the better Luke looked. So it was it was definitely a good one. Now the other Huntington guy in the heavyweights, Derek Gibson. You know, Derek, I've seen him as a as a a fighter, brawler, kind of semi-pro guy. And now we've seen him last time as a real uh, you know, scientific boxer. But this was the first time I thought he put it all together. Uh he was dominant against a good opponent that was game. Um, we know inevitably that could be a matchup there. Matt Adams looked great, but what'd you think about Derek this time around? Well-trained, well-coached. I mean, it, it, was the, it was the prettiest right hand thrown the entire night. I mean, he just right on the button. He just, there's, there's, I mean, he's been doing this several years now. He's, he's, he's conditioned, he's, he's, he's thrown into the game. and I mean, it, it was dominant. And he's got a big matchup now, October 16th, round three. It's Bad Mad Adams versus Derek Gibson. I uh, can't wait to watch that fight. Yeah, Matt Adams, uh, Matt Adams put on a good show the other night. He, uh, I thought he got a couple of chances earlier to put the guy out. If he would have just uh, distanced himself, he, he, he would have smothered himself a little bit too much. He should have taken MMA in him. Uh, so I think he should have stepped back a little bit and maybe do some more uppercuts. He would have, he would have finished that guy earlier than he did. But, but Matt's, uh, Matt's one of those guys that you don't want to run into at a bar somewhere and, and kick off. He's just he's an animal. You know, I thought the light heavyweights were exciting too. Um... Th those guys, they showed up, made weight. They acted professional. There was good matchups, random matchups. Any highlights or fighters that you took out of that that we sh that you think we should keep an eye on as we get to the semifinals? I thought uh, I thought Arthur Brown was most impressive of the night. AB was, was 
super impressive. I, I'd never seen him fight before. Didn't really know who he was. <laughs> the man, he was, he was on point. I mean, he, he put on a click and the and, 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 you know, Kelly's a phenomenal fight. That's one of the guys I look, I look to, to go through this tournament. He just, he put it all over him. You know, I was impressed with AB and uh, Keenan, both of those guys, um, you know, coming from like street beefs and different stuff that they've been doing inside the actual ring, sanctioned event, all that kind of stuff. They've got a, a good mixture of their background, but I thought those two guys probably looked as cool and calm in the ring as anybody in the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're great. Uh, Mitchell and, uh, and AB is going to be a good fight. It's going to be a really good fight. Yeah, and I told I talked with Mitchell earlier, and one of the things that Mitchell uh, he will truly be able to say he earned this thing because he had Bobby Freshness in round one, and then going into two he's got a B, and then the winner of uh, the other semifinal. So he he had no easy matchups or, no, or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. So he he had a tough road to go. Um, one of the differences coming up in Welch from the Huntington Show is our main event, and we've got a West Virginia State title. ABA title, both of those belts on the line with Derek Lambert versus Zach Kuhn. Zach's the current ABA champ right now, super welterweight. The division goes to 154. These guys have have agreed to a 152 max. Um, should go. It's an eight round fight. Matchups of styles. I think you know we've discussed this a little bit, but without giving me a winner, what do you, how do you see that fight playing out? Cause that's a big one. You know, Derek's mm -hmm. going to pack the house. He's got three or 400 fans. It's going to be there. Zach's from Welch. It's mm -hmm. in Welch. It's going to be rowdy. Um, what do you think about that one? I like said, the you know, styles make the matchups. It depends on who, who takes control of the fight early. You know, Derek, Derek's the boxer, but he's, he's more of a brawler than he is a boxer. And then you got Zach. I've been around a long time. He comes from a long, long amateur background. And uh, because he's, he's very well trained by his dad, and, and uh, it's, it's going to be a dandy. It's going to be a good fight. And you know, not throughout, not geographically covering the entire state, surrounding states, whatever. But like as far as Southern West Virginia goes, these two guys, their weight class, with their resumes, what they've did in the past, and who they are, well liked, and those kind of things. I don't think it gets much bigger than this. You know, there's been heavyweight fights and that kind of stuff, but when you get down in these weight ranges to find two guys matched up like this that are willing to fight each other, I can't go back in recent history and find another fight down in that weight class. That's, that's featured two guys like this. Yeah, and it's, that, it's that time too. Where everybody's got the been cooped up with, with COVID for so long, and these guys are itching to fight. They've been in the gym forever, so it's easier to make these kinds of matchups right now. And, and uh, it's, it's going to be a good one because you know how it is when you're fighting in your hometown. You don't want to lose. You're going to bring your A game for both these guys, and it's going to it's going to be a war. Yeah, I'm real excited about it. The semifinals, both those weight classes, as far as our tournament goes. We're going to be adding about eight or nine amateur standalone bouts. Now, one thing I haven't gotten a chance to talk about, I'm going to use this as the chance to do that, is we had two fights that were standalone bouts on this Huntington card to start the event off. When those guys won those fights, I told them, you're guaranteed a spot next year's tournament. When you come in and outside of a tournament and you win one of those, we're going to have eight, nine, maybe ten of those fights on before the semifinals and Zach. It's going to be a little bit longer card, maybe 15 fights or so. Hopefully we get to that number. I've had a lot of uh, interested fighters reach out to me. So if anybody's watching this, any weight class between age 18 to 39, if you think you've got something to be in next year's tournament, which we're going to cover multiple weight classes, um, now would be a chance to get in there and do that. Tickets are going to go on sale next week. I'm excited to be in a big venue. You know, when we first started this King of the Coalfields back in 2012, we did the Logan Field House. We had a bunch of people in there, and then we kind of went to the smaller, smaller, uh, more intimate, old school kind of boxing stuff. So this is going to be a big event. Um, anything as far as moving into this one other than the main event, when we come to those semifinal matchups, whether it's light heavyweight or heavyweight, what are you looking for in that? I, I'm sure it's, it's going to be a good crowd because, like I said before, it's, it's people are itching to get out and do stuff now. You know, these, these shows, I mean, Mike Shepard did a show outdoors uh, here recently that it rained and rained and rained, and then the rain let up, and this place was packed beyond belief. People just want to get out and, and, and just see these guys fight again. And I, I think you're going you're going to have a really nice crowd up there at Welch. 
Now, as far as after the fight goes there, we almost had another fight, Bad Matt Adams and the Adam Bomb, Adam Collins. Uh, Matt got a little rowdy out there in the crowd, and uh, I'm glad you were sitting there with me uh, as a policeman nowadays, and you were able to go over and kind of squash the, the situation. We talked about that on our last show, and then I saw you actually get to do it, so that was pretty cool. Um, if you were to pick who advances from the heavyweights, you've got Boggs versus Gary. You've got Matt Adams versus Derek. They're, they're pretty close to call. What do you think? I, I think uh, I think Gary's going to beat Boggs, and uh, it just depends on if it's almost another one of those slugfests you're going to look for with Matt Adams and Derek Gibson. You don't know you know that Matt's going to smother him. You know, Derek's going to try to stand outside the box, and Matt's going to try to smother him and, and rip his head off. So that's going to be a dandy right there. That, that, one, that one's hard to call. I think uh, I think Derek out boxes Matt Adams. So. Well, and if your prediction's right, we'll be looking at a rematch between Derek Gibson and Gary Rowland December 11th down there in Huntington at the same venue. Um, I, you can't draw it up any better than that. But all four of these guys, opportunity to win the whole thing. They've earned it. They've fought their way through this. I'm really seeing them take it super serious now, so that's cool, you know, after they get advanced so far. But – I'm sure I'll see you there in Huntington on the, on the fourth show. I hope you're able to make it down there on to Welch. I know it's quite the drive, but if your work schedule works out, I'd love to have you down there. It's going to be a great fight. Um, thanks for sitting down, man, taking time with me. I'm going to get your perspective ever so often here of these fights as things go by. Um, stay safe out there on the streets, taking care of everybody. We appreciate what you guys do. I appreciate it. Anytime. Thanks, man.